It's no secret, most all employers are researching candidates online, with close to 90% of those checking social media to verify experience, and more than half not hiring applicant based on what they found. So would you rather a potential employer only know you for your unrelated content that doesn't showcase your experience? Or would you rather them find an elegantly designed portfolio website that showcases your skills? What is up, data nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst, and my channel is all about tech and skills for data science. And in this video today, we're going to be going over why you need a portfolio website. From there, we're going to then move into what tools and actually how I recommend setting up the framework of your website to be most successful. So with that, let's jump into the first portion, which is understanding why you need a portfolio website. The first and most important reason is that it establishes an online presence. More than half of employers won't even consider you to be interviewed if they can't find you online. With this, it helps you shape how you can showcase your experience. And additionally, because you're online, you're thus increasing your chances of getting noticed by an employer. In my last video, I talked with a hiring manager about his thoughts on establishing an online presence and its importance. I, I will tell you that if there's a personal website or probably a GitHub, it changes that maybe one minute that I'm spending on a resume into maybe like up to five minutes. Oh, so basically, how can I get more time with the hiring manager? Maybe have this self-designed uh, GitHub page or website that makes you grab more attention. Even if you're not searching for a new job or a new opportunity, I still feel like this is a great option for you to pursue. As an example, based on my online presence, I from time to time still get offered consulting opportunities, even though I'm not actively searching. So it's good to know that those opportunities are existing and that my name's getting put out there and that I have an opportunity down the road if I want to take it. All right, moving into reason number two, and that is the ability to showcase your skills in one location. For the field that I work in of data analytics, I use a multitude of tools and they can't all be displayed in one online platform. For example, let's say I have a project that uses some sort of code like Python or R. I could host it on an online platform such as GitHub or Kaggle. But then what ends up if I have another project that hosts a dashboard, so something like Tableau? In that case, I'd have to host it on Tableau Public. And then it gets even more complicated if I make a project that's like a file, such as like a Google Sheets. So the problem arises when you're trying to showcase all these different projects and they're spread out across different platforms. A portfolio website can help solve this problem by aggregating all of those different tools and online platforms to one singular location and then direct a recruiter or hiring manager to those different resources of where maybe your code or dashboard is located. This in turn allows you to craft and shape your own storyline, which leads to the third point, which is a portfolio website allows you to show your storytelling skills. For my job as a data analyst, and I feel like others in the data science community as well, I feel our job is a professional storyteller. So building fancy dashboards and maybe writing some complicated code are nice, but if I can't work with the team and effectively communicate my insights, I'm gonna add zero value. So a portfolio website is perfect for this. Yes, it allows you to showcase the skills you have, but then it also allows you to tell a story and to show how you've utilized those tools to generate an impact with a storyline. All right, so now that we've gone over the why for the portfolio website, let's go into the what. What components do we need to include in our portfolio website to be most successful? So I've gone through and researched over 100 different portfolio websites. I've also talked with others in the field, and I've combined a list of four key elements that I think are necessary for a portfolio website. The first is about me, and this is what's gonna grab the attention. This should be some sort of description about what roles you're looking for, what skills you have, and then also maybe a short biography background on yourself. Next up is your resume. At a minimum, you should have some link or maybe it included on a separate page. With the resume itself, this should have your different qualifications, your skills, and also your experiences listed in it. Then is the portfolio section. And this section is to be utilized to go further into those details and experiences you have that you captured in your About Me and your resume. 
For this, you wanna showcase your most relevant projects along with a short description, what tools you've used, and then from there, links maybe to other online platforms to where these projects are located. Finally, you wanna wrap things up with your contact details and the different online platforms that you're a part of. All right, so now that we've gone over examples from other websites, let's look how I put this together for my portfolio website. For me, I like to include all of my different relevant information on one single page, and this is called a landing page. If you decide to use this approach, it's very important that you keep all of your different areas succinct and to the point. Research has shown that an individual generates interest within 15 seconds. After that point, you're not likely to generate interest and they're likely to leave your page. To start, I have my welcome where it gets straight to the point. It showcases who this website is from, what position I work in, and then a call to action for you to look at my resume. Next, we move into a short about me section to describe my background. It's very important here to keep this short and to the point. Don't tell your life story here. Then I move into showcasing my skills and experience, showcasing it through different visualizations for them to potentially latch onto. From there, we move into my most relevant portfolio projects that I have displayed. For each one of these, I have a short description along with the tools utilized and then links to direct them to other online platforms where maybe my code or dashboard is located. With these projects, I can provide a video that I may have made or even direct them to different codes on GitHub or maybe even a dashboard on Tableau Public. So that's my website. Feel free to design yours differently and get creative with it, but I still would recommend to stick to those four main elements of an about me, a resume, contact details, and also a portfolio. All right, so now let's get into the final section of how I recommend that you set up your website. So for this, I'll be using WordPress, which I've been using for the past five years. I love WordPress because it's a popular free and open source option that allows you to build your website quickly and easily. Now WordPress is great for building your website, but you'll need to actually host it on the internet so we others can see it. For this, I recommend Hostinger as you can get plans for as low as $1 and up to $10 a month. Hostinger is one of the lowest cost options with the highest uptimes and it has excellent support. I like to go with the premium hosting option because it includes in the first year a free domain name. As a disclaimer, I do have an affiliate link that costs you no extra, but also helps support this channel. If you so decide to go with an annual plan, you can get up to 91% off if you use the coupon code Luke at checkout. All right, so let's show how quick this is to get up and running with your WordPress site on Hostinger. So first navigate to the link provided and then you can go in and select what plan you wanna actually utilize. I'll be selecting premium and I'll go with that yearly plan so I can get it for about $3 a month. From here, if you have the premium account, you can go in and then claim your domain. Once that is done, you can then get into actually editing and building your website. I then go in and I select a theme that I wanna utilize. Once you have your theme created, you can actually go in and actually customize it. As an example, you can easily go in and add different things. So say I wanted to add an image. It uses a drag and drop type style where I could go in and maybe even select the image that I wanna use and have it insert. Bam, so that's my thoughts on why you need a portfolio website and my recommendation for how you should set it up. In general, I highly recommend that you use some sort of website builder, such as WordPress hosted by Hostinger in this case. This allows you to build your websites in a fraction of the time that it would take you to build them in straight HTML and CSS alone. Additionally, they're not gonna be as beautiful. I've used straight HTML and CSS to make websites, and as shown here, it's not really a beautiful or elegant portfolio. This website took me over a month to build using straight code. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.